So somewhere along the lines throughout history, there's a great mystery. I've found over the years that people get confused with the religious aspect. You have the New Age, you have all these different religions coming together in the New Age. It literally is a synthesis, and that was what it was constructed to be. That does not mean that the information in the New Age is wrong. You must take that point from me. It doesn't mean it's right either, but it's a nice synthesis of previous religions. And where do you go from there? Jesus this character failed in his revolution. It's probably the greatest failure in human history, you know, who was then suddenly turned into a Christ figure. And the reason for this is that Paul, Saul, was the only scribe around at the time. If you do your research, you might find that he had a university. and He wrote these books. He wrote many, many books, letters to the Ephesians, you name it, it's in the Bible. He wrote a lot more as well. This is one of the most shocking things that any researcher would come across, but as, when I mention it, go do your research. Tell me I'm wrong. The church knows this. I'm going to forget some names. I'm very bad with names, so I'm just going to grab the notes. Um, so I can remember them. <coughs> okay, there's two tricks in the Bible, which anyone who wants to research it, and, and this isn't something you'll do in hours, trust me, but do what I did, spend a few years over it, if you've got the time. I didn't actually, I was dragged into this. I didn't go with anything, I literally did find myself and then had to rationalise it and do the research afterwards. Uh, Paul, who established the Christian church, yes, also known as Saul, was also somebody else in history that you've all heard of. He was Josephus, okay? This was the Roman legionnaire who wrote the history of the Jews and the history of the times at that time. It's been noted by researchers, the first thing you notice when you look at Josephus is he's, his history is very similar to that which is put forward as being the history of Jesus. So therefore, he was trying to compete with this Jesus guy. He was trying to be better than him and steal some of the nice stuff that Jesus had done. No, that's not true. That's the first conclusion you draw. The actual truth is that Josephus was Paul. And Paul hated Jesus. He was his main contender. Jesus, in the Bible openly, calls Paul the liar. Okay? And if you ask a, if you ask a Christian where this thing, the liar, came from, they'll, they'll embellish that and say, oh, actually, he was a good man. Okay? Again, this is known by uh, the last person I spoke to about this was a bishop, and he simply not even understands this. So, you have this Christian element that do not understand that Paul was Josephus. Paul was also the character called Joseph, Josephus. It's all there. It doesn't prove anything, but again, these are the same people. You have to go find the connection for yourself, and hopefully I'll help you do that. He was Joseph of Arimathea. This guy was supposed to be the uncle of Jesus and so on. At that point, we're touching on the poem by William Blake and did those feet in ancient times. William Blake was a druid. I don't know if anyone's aware of that. I have pictures of him being initiated into the order that I was in. Uh, together, incidentally, with Winston Churchill, many of us, okay? So when you look out there and see your leaders over at Bohemian Grove, doing their druidic ceremonies, it's very real. That is what they are. Druidry and druids are not bad. In fact, they were the original religion in, in this country. In fact, they're the ones who taught this Jesus character an awful lot anyway. But that's a long, long story. So, I discussed this actually a few years ago with Sir George Trevelyan, who is known to be, or oh, you know, they claim he set up the New Age movement. He was the best friend of Prince Charles. Once I started talking about this, it was not friendly anymore. And I wondered why that might be. And the reason is because it is the great scam that's about to be pulled. It's actually being pulled under your nose now. So, that said, go do your research on Jesus. Don't necessarily believe what's being put forward by the truth movement at the moment that this guy did not exist. 
he did exist, who he was and what he knew is the key to the conspiracy. Because for 2,000 years there's been a line of people, the Knights Templar being one, who know this full story and have kept it within their secret societies. The church, of course, with Paul trying to destroy Jesus, that's actually what they did for hundreds of years. Any mention of the true story of Jesus would be squashed and people would be murdered. So it went underground. That story is there today. If you come across a Freemason or Secret Society member, they're not going to know this. I'm telling you, this is known at the top, but anyone can research this. Particularly once you know the code that is detailed throughout the Bible, which we will move on to. Um, Mike, time have you got? We are just short to um, 3 o'clock, right? At least another 15 point. So, <coughs> we're, we're at the point in this conspiracy as it unfolds where it's, it's clear to all that there's some insidious cabal, many people call them Freemason bankers, uh, operating behind this. Uh, you've got religious and spiritual groups announcing their expectations for what's going to happen in 2012. Some people are expecting disasters. Insight. Some of you I know have insight into 2012, others might think it's a load of tosh. It's actually, in my opinion, not a load of tosh. It is the one thing that fundamentally proves throughout. And again, this is because of the coding mechanism. Um, so we're all hypnotized into some sort of apathy. And you might think I'm talking about what you would call sheeple, but I'm not. I'm talking about you and the truth movement and me. The apathy exists and the confusion exists. This is a confusion movement and I've watched it develop. I was longing for the day. I sort of knew one day I'd be talking about this and, and here I am, but it's not as clear cut as it first appears to be. Now you wouldn't expect it to be. There's a lot of money. This is the biggest black operation in history, the best financed operation in history and it is to impose a new world order that's long been planned by these secret societies. The secret societies, however, split. Now I want to ask anyone in this room a question. Um, it may be that no one can answer it, but it's a fairly simple question for anyone who's looked at secret societies. What have they been researching? What do they exist for? There are exceptions, of course, but I'm talking the general scope of things. Can anyone here tell me what the secret societies research? Uh, well, the, the prime kind of thing about the Freemasons was that always were searching for the Word of God. Weren't they? Yeah, yeah, okay. That's, well, that's the Freema Freemasonic angle. They're basically searching for what I've been telling you about. They know this story that they're told by the churches and so on is not right. They also have an inkling of what the true story was, and at the top, believe me, they do. I've only just touched on it. The story is amazing. So if anyone is afraid that by saying Jesus was a man, that I'm some sort of satanic person trying to put Christianity down, I am not. What I'm saying is that when you understand who Jesus was, what he taught, how he learned it, it's here to this day, that is what should be coming back. That is what's bubbling underneath. This knowledge is bubbling into the new age, but you are kept away from the fundamental truth. They want to bring Christians with them to unify all of this into one uh, theocracy, as they call it. In fact, their definition is, and I've forgotten now, <laughs> um, it's basically a theocracy of business, where business and theocracy runs the world. Their theocracy. The people are waking up to the fact that the universe is a wonderful place and there are certain things that everyone is becoming aware of in nature, which is pretty amazing. As if there's an underlying order to everything. Um, wonderful program at the minute, I think, called Wonders of the Solar System. Um, scientist working at CERN, musician as well, he used to play the d Ream, I believe. Um, great guy. And in his program, he's openly stating these things are connected. He touched on the moon in the last program, noticing these amazing things, which are, of course,
coincidence.